Good afternoon and welcome to the latest edition of the Mortal Kombat franchise documentary. I'm delighted to be joined by the one and only David Lodge, who voiced the role of Cabal in Mortal Kombat, the iconic video game which has sold millions and millions of copies all gotcha. over the world, from Brazil to Argentina to South Africa to Ireland to Germany to <laughs> USA to Canada to China to Japan, all over the world. And I suppose, David... To be involved yeah. in su such an iconic franchise as Mortal Kombat, as an actor, as a voiceover artist, uh, it's probably one of those dream jobs when you hear it, Mortal Kombat coming, you might be say, this is going to capitalize my name to a whole new global audience. Well, Jim, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm protected during COVID-19 with my Jedi Knights, another great franchise. But back to Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Um, you may not know this, even though you're an expert with history, but Cabal was not the first character I played in the Mortal Kombat franchise. Okay, uh, I'm for real. Yeah, for real. So I'm going to reveal something in a couple of minutes that you won't believe. But uh, first of all, uh, yeah, the, the Mortal Kombat uh, franchise has been around since, what, 1990 or thereabouts? Yeah, since 1995 was the first movie, but it's been around since 1992, 1993, two, three years before the original movie. Well, the arcade game, let's start there, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, I think I actually, or here's a little secret that you, I have played besides Cabal, I played uncredited, let me say that again, okay. without credit, um, another character, due to politics and financial reasons, I can't explain why, but I'm uncredited. But I actually played Raiden a couple of okay. times as well. So okay. I think the God of the that, Thunder. Yeah, I played Raiden in a couple of the very early, uh, before Richard Debcar, my good friend, played him in video games, which you probably know, okay. Richard, do you? He, we're getting on to that. I, we've spoken to Ryan Robbins, who played uh, Raiden in Mortal Kombat Legacy, the TV web series. Oh, I see. Well, yeah, Richard yeah. Epcar, my good friend, a uh, big guy, he's done a lot of voiceover work, too. And he, he plays Raiden a lot in the video game franchise. Okay. But back to the arcade game, I think I was one of the first people to do the efforts and the fight sounds um, in the arcade game and then came back to actually voice him in the earlier manifestations of the Mortal Kombat franchise in the video games as they launched um, scenes and actual storyline for Mortal Kombat. Because as you know, Jim, when it first came out, it was just a fighting game. Yep. So uh, I got to play Raiden when he first started talking, but I didn't get a credit for it in some of those very early uh, game video games. Yeah, so uh, David, in terms of that, yeah. so you're been involved with Mortal Kombat since its foundations really as such. Uh, so you must have had a real sort of uh, good knowledge of the franchise uh, growing up along. And when it when it sort of, um, after the 90s came and sort of went, did you think you would keep going on as the way it did? It sort of, uh, it sort of never sort of went away. It sort of never died out, Mortal Kombat. No, it evolved into these realms and into a storyline, which is kind of wacky and crazy. But you got to remember that I've probably done 8,500 voiceover jobs, including my commercials, but hundreds and hundreds of video games. And I also start on the Power Rangers, another franchise that's kind of similar in the sense that it's lots of fighting, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but with Mortal Kombat, yeah, it has evolved. And it's become, as you know, it has a big storyline, a big following. And one of the key memories I have is I don't know what uh, particular version of Mortal Kombat, what particular game, because it's, it's been so long, where they're in the cemetery and the Mortal Kombat heroes are dead and you can bring them back to life. Do you remember that at all? Yeah, I think so. Um, it's uh, I don't it's know going what, back now to the early 90s I, or uh, late, 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 late 1999 or something, a video game yeah. at that time. And the reason I bring that up is because my son plays all kinds of video games and then he goes, hey, dad, there's you. <laughs> hey, dad. <laughs> and I'm sure the other actors say the same thing. The kids love it. And we used to play Mortal Kombat. And then we got, um, I don't know whether Tekken, no, Tekken uh, followed Mortal Kombat, did it not? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter were the two big franchises around the 90s. And then when the PlayStation arrived, uh, Tekken then came about around the 2000s. 
Yeah, we were heavily into Mortal Kombat and Tekken. But to this day, Jim, let's be honest. I walk into an arcade. They have them in Las Vegas. They have this 7,000 square foot pinball place, arcade. It's over the top. If ever you're in Las Vegas, uh, Nevada, go to this place. I can't remember the name of it, but they just ask somebody. And there's the Mortal Kombat, and you get on the arcade game, and it brings back so many memories. It was fantastic. I loved it. I loved it. And you mentioned as a voiceover artist, uh, Dare David, as well. So the new Mortal Kombat that you're involved in now, in terms of the storylines, the graphic scenes, uh, playing uh, the character uh, Cabal, first of all, how did that come about to get involved with the new sort of Mortal Kombat uh, video games, playing the character uh, Cabal? And are you sort of shocked and blown away by the animation and the cut scenes? I mean, you, if you put all the cut scenes together, it actually, it's on YouTube. It plays like right. a full movie for three and, three and a half hours. It's got over three, four million moves, even three hundred four million views. Even if you never played the fighting game, you could just watch it on its own like. Yeah, it's true. And to tell you the truth, I I play so many different characters. I don't know if you looked me up on uh, IMDb, but I just go from gig to gig, you know, on video games, whether it's Anthem or uh, any, you know, Call of Duty, Red Dead, Revolver, all these video games, World of Warcraft. So Mortal Kombat's just one of many. And it was so long ago, I really don't remember the part of Cabal. Of course, I auditioned for it and beat out probably 500 people to play the park. Mm. Um, yeah. and I haven't been blessed to be on camera um, and I couldn't be I'm just too busy as a voiceover talent <laughs> so yeah. that's a blessing I guess I don't know <laughs> but um, it's it's great to have been a part of it and uh, my like I said my kids love to play uh, arcade games and they love to play it when on PlayStation and whatever other manifestations of it but uh, I basically auditioned for the role of, of Raiden got cast, and then they changed me to Cabal at some point. <laughs> so Okay. <laughs> and I suppose, uh, David, uh, in terms of Mortal Kombat and uh, the, the movies, did, did you see the two movies in the 90s, uh, the first one or two? I, I haven't, and I, I need to go on YouTube to watch it, to tell you the truth, because I am a Mortal Kombat fan. I mean, I just don't have the time to play a lot of the games I'm in, to be honest. It's just... I. I'm, you know, I have auditions waiting or I have to go do a job in a studio. So I haven't had a chance to answer your question. I haven't really had a chance to watch the movies, but. Um, yeah. No problem, David. Uh, in terms of Mortal Kombat being known globally all over the world, uh, sure. your name is associated with it now in terms of the Cabal character. Are you sort of blown away by the the, the sheer volume of the, the fan base and the diehard fan base all over the world? And do you often see tweets or comments on social media with your name attached to yes. it or forums uh, in terms of speaking about you and Cabal? Yeah, um, even to this day, even though I haven't played Cabal in maybe 10, 15 years, I might have been 2011 it was the last time I was uh, I had worked on a Mortal Kombat game. Okay. Um, I'll have to get my agent to call up and get me more uh, gigs on the Mortal Kombat. But um, what the question was, am I surprised with it yeah. as a franchise? Is no, are you question? surprised? To, are you surprised to? hear your name on social media by all the Mortal oh, yeah. Kombat fans I, and talking about uh, you associating your name to Cabal. Yeah, I still get, um, as a matter of fact, before you even reached out to me, uh, Jim, I get at least once every three weeks somebody tweeting about me as Cabal and writing me a direct oh. message. So I, there is a crazy fan base out there because like I said, I think if, if today's 2020, and we go back, I haven't played it since 2011. There's some people that are still, you know, pining over the Mortal Kombat franchise and reaching out to me, wanting my autograph or want to send me a picture to sign. Um, but they know me as, I don't know whether you know this or not, because you're probably dealing with more of the other actors that are on camera that are live action. But the voiceover guys, we go from like Power Rangers to Star Wars to um, you know, Jiraiya, the pervy toad sage, which I'm on Naruto. Yeah. So I have a wide fan base that knows me for all the characters I've played, which are hundreds and not forgotten is Cabal. Unfortunately, they don't know that I'm also Raiden until this, this point um, in a couple of the uh, versions. So. That's the, that's the big breaking news from this interview. Yeah. Anyway, David Lodge is the original Raiden. 
Um, yeah. David, in terms of uh, uh, there's a new Mortal Kombat movie coming out in 2021, uh, 25 years uh, since uh, 1997, really. Uh, it's a blockbuster movie and it's uh, Louis Tan and a good lot of actors. And it's more going back to the sort of uh, Louis Tan, who plays an actor, and as in a recent interview, he said, This is dark, it's sinister, it's more like a, a dark night, um, a more like a joker in terms of an R sort of a rating. And do you think maybe audience are more acceptable of those sort of movies now than they would have been in the 90s in terms of it was more PG, more family? orientated they couldn't go past a certain level of violence now we're seeing today in the 21st century they're more sort of darker sort of sinister sort of movies and Marty Combat, I suppose fits right into that element I think uh in order to appeal to the wide base of people they have to go the dark knight route even Superman which used to be silly if you remember with uh, Gene Hackman in the Earl and Chris Reeves they were silly, the Superman things, back in the 80s. And then the taste of our culture, uh, whether because we're living in a dystopia right now uh, or not, or just because our tastes have evolved, we've taken on that whole dark night feel of, of the Batman, where things are really uh, darker and more uh, cinematic and more real in terms of you know, violence and uh, dark themes. We're more accepting of that. Would you agree, Jim, that the, the, the culture yeah, yeah. has become more yeah. accepted? Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be great. I mean, even look at Star Wars behind me. It started out very uh, Flash Gordon-like and uh, fun, and then it became progressively darker, right? Yeah. So yeah. everything's moving into that realm. I think the taste quotient and the believability of new neutral characters becoming good and then becoming bad and then bad characters becoming good only to become better. You know, it's, it's crazy. So it's interesting. I'm looking forward to it. I suppose, uh, David, you mentioned it's a long time since you've uh, voiced uh, the character Cabal and you've done so many that it's impossible for your memories. But when you go in and you see a script in front of you in terms of a character, do you almost see, feel that sort of, can you get a sense of an idea? What's, what, 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 do you picture an image or do you have to see the animations and the drawings of him first to get an idea how you're going to vice him? Or what, what's, as a vice actor, how does that work? Because is it just you go by lines or just, do you see a bit of video in terms of uh, his backstory, his research? Because obviously the, the tone of the vice, everything, how you want to portray that sort of look. Obviously, if you don't have maybe drawings or a bit of video footage to see, I imagine... It, it can really drop that imaginary picture in your head? Well, to answer the question, it, the answer is yes and no. It, like you said, depending upon what's available. I always ask if there's a picture of the character because that lets you know sort of like, is he evil looking? Is he short? Is he tall? Does he have a lot of muscles? You know, so it helps to have that. But if they don't have a visual image, either in a video or a, uh, actual rendering, then, um, I have to make it up on the spot. Um, wow. Yesterday, for example, I, I went in to work on a new video game, NDA, I can't talk about it, but it was for okay. Warner Brothers. And uh, they can't tell me the name of the project. They can't tell me really what it's about, but you're this character, here's the qualities that you gotta be. And then I come up with a voice or whatever they may need, you know? So it could be anything like an old timer, or like Dusty or something, you know? So. <laughs> It's, it just depends on the situation. When you work in cartoons, they have a lot more information. They have the pictures of the characters, like for Disney, they do that a lot. When you get to video games, you, they just throw you in the booth and say, we can't tell you much, but you're a bad guy. You're angry. You've been through a lot of stuff. And then you come up with a voice print and you say, how about this guy? Or how about this voice print? Or how about this tone? How about this age? And then I just do it on the spot and we roll, boom, record. <laughs> So I, I, David, I take it in terms of that being involved as a voiceover actor. It means right. obviously if you portray a character in 
one sort of video game. Obviously, in five or six years' time, you could come along and portray a different character. Or you don't have to necessarily stay associated to the same character. So if a new video game comes about, say, a new Mortal Kombat in two years' time, you could voice a different character or different roles. So it gives you that sort of variability to move around, where as an actual actor, he's probably his face is probably shown as one character, then he's probably always associated with that character. And I suppose it's very hard to portray a different character or different unless he changes his look looks dramatically well yes like once again yes and no like i'm known as a multi-voice so like if if a character arises that like i played in dynasty warriors you know uh an asian character ling tong you know so you maybe have a slight asian accent something like that or like i do a lot of russians you know maybe the guy is like a big russian mortal Kombat killer and he has a voice like this i will kill you i will crush you let's fight you know, so whatever street fighter, accent, that'd be street fighter esque. <laughs> yeah, come on. So um, yeah, so I take on accents, or I can be anybody they pretty much want, and that's why they pay me. They say be, you know, be a bird, be a dog. I do all that stuff. I do impersonations. So voice actors, if they're a multi voice, as as I am, we get to play whatever little kids, maybe, or you know, whatever they want, you know. And then we go into the monsters or dragons whatever they need. So if Mortal Kombat was to come and approach me and say, David, we want you to be Cabal or we want you to be someone new, I could do it. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> and I suppose, uh, David, in, in terms of that, then, I suppose being involved in a franchise like Mortal Kombat, does it give right. you a sort of sense of a joy that you probably 20 years on now, I don't want to tip beta, you're probably still in great, uh, probably still in great shape, I imagine, running, lips, r running laps around the local pitch. But you obviously Mortal Kombat will probably still be going on, I imagine. And it's probably one of those franchises like James Bond. It just never dies or goes away. It doesn't seem to be going anywhere anywhere soon, quick. So be associated with a franchise that's pr probably going to go on and go on and go on. And your name is always linked to that. Does that give you a sense of a pride? Where uh, not, sometimes as vice actor, you can be involved in one or two projects. And that might they might run for three or four years. That might be okay. the end of them. But, but in yeah. terms of Mortal Kombat, it's it probably in 20 years' time, uh, your grandkids were probably might be playing it or stuff like that. And in terms of that, they'll probably you can probably say, I'm still linked to that, or did you know I was original that? So it's probably one of those franchises, once you get on it, it's like a gravy train. It, it never goes away. It is a gravy train. And, uh, you know, it will be around because, well, first of all, since they're going to launch this movie, they're looking at it as a franchise, much like mm -hmm. Star Wars or Power Rangers. They're giving it what they call legs. They want to develop this franchise and make it a lasting franchise so that um, it does go on into the future and have multiple reincarnations in the movie business or a TV show. And I think that's probably what's going to happen next. They'll get some kind of episodic TV show for Hulu or Amazon. And it's like I say, I'm on Care Bears, too. I mean, I'm not trying to talk about multiple projects here, but they try and take things like Care Bears and make it into a movie. Um, you know, so or Power Rangers, they've done that with that franchise. So it's time for Mortal Kombat to have a big release movie and then get other manifestations of it in other media. Um, and I think it's it's certainly something that uh, that the big uh, streaming services are looking for more product, something with legs, something they can carry off into the future and invest in now. And it'll be here for 20 more years. So it is a business. It's a business decision to develop these characters. And I suppose, uh, David, um, I suppose it wouldn't be un unfair to let you go uh, to, mm -hmm. instead of, uh, first of all, maybe for 20 seconds, just off the top of your head, it doesn't have to be exa exact, but maybe oh. to give us a few cabal sort of what you think might be sort of lines or a, a, a sort of a tinkle sort of a vice or something off there 10 seconds uh, just to finish off before we go all right i'm not really sure but he's yeah. probably cabal is probably evil i know he was thought of as being good but maybe maybe just maybe he's evil <laughs> i don't know <laughs> I'll have to go on YouTube to hear myself. <laughs> <laughs> David, on that note, an absolute pleasure talking to you today to relive your memories of your time in Mortal Kombat. Uh, 
fighting the character uh, Cabal and that shocking re revelation that the original Raiden was Mr. David Lodge himself uh, going back in the early 90s uh, in the original video games. Pleasure talking to you, David, and Likewise. these troublesome times. Uh, stay safe, stay well, and uh, no doubt about it, uh, more Mortal Kombat projects to come in the near future. I hope so. Thanks to all the fans. And to just make sure you want to look up that Raiden thing, go to Google and put David Lodge Raiden and you'll see uncredited. Uh, and so it's kind of interesting. So that's the verification. Thanks, fans. Thanks, Mortal Kombat fans. Love you. See you in the future. Fight.